campus and um, college really kind of grew out of proportion. Um, you know, lots of consequences, lots of brushes with the law because of my drinking. Um, you know, I wound up getting two DUIs in two months uh, at the same intersection, um, embarrassingly, and uh, should have gotten many more. And uh, so it was actually my sort of brushes with the law and um, looking at, you know, spending some time in jail for violating probation that ultimately got, it, got me into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, my sobriety date is January 1st, 2008. So I've just got what, 10 and a half years sober now, um, which is a miracle to me and, and not something that I ever expected. Um, when, I, when I got sober, it was, again, you know, related to sort of the judge kind of handing down, you got to go to 72 meetings in, in three months. And I thought, you know, I would, you know, go to my AA meetings, you know, get off of probation, get my driver's license back. And, and that's sort of be done with it. But uh, here I am, you know, 10 and a half years later, which is, you know, it's a miracle to me. Um, so, uh, again, you know, my sobriety date is January 1st, 2008. I, I think I, I turned a corner after a couple of months sober where, um, you know, at first I really just wanted to kind of get my life back together. And then I started to see that this, you know, thing could really work for me. And um, I just, you know, I stuck around. I got a sponsor. I started going to meetings seriously. Um, and uh, so that's kind of at a high level, um, sort of the, the chronology. Um, so I thought I'd pivot into just a discussion around experience, strength, and hope. Um, I thought that might be the most sort of helpful, um, especially for those that are, that are newer. Um, so in terms of experience, which I guess is my advice for those early in recovery, you know, based on kind of what I've gone through. The first thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, I don't think I could have gotten sober on my own. Um, I truly did need the support and fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. For a long time, you know, super early in recovery, I think I did try to do it myself. And I was the first one, you know, when the meeting was over to just, you know, get up and go. I didn't want to get to know anybody because I didn't plan on sticking around. And I think that that was really to my detriment. If I had, you know, opened myself up and really gotten in the middle of the boat and gotten to know people and, you know, stuck around after the meeting, um, gone out to eat sooner, I would have felt a part of more quickly. Instead, you know, it took me actually a couple months before I wound up getting a sponsor and, and uh, starting to work the steps. Um, so for those first couple months, I was really, you know, just sort of running off of fumes. Uh, so I definitely recommend you know, leaning on the fellowship, I think, is, is really critical, and it's the, the only way that this program works. Another thing, uh, you know, that people told me when I was early in recovery that, you know, I think is helpful is a bit of a cliche, but this notion of playing the tape forward. Uh, there were a lot of times, especially, you know, my first year, that what, what came really naturally for me was to drink. Like, that's what I knew how to do. And I hadn't yet sort of, I mean, it just it was difficult, you know? So just this simple reminder of playing the tape forward and thinking about what the consequences of, you know, deciding to, you know, go out to the bars or like call up old friends, of what that was going to do, you know, sounds strangely simple, but, you know, it was, it was really helpful for me. Um, and then the final thing on the sort of experience front, you know, and I could, I could go on for a long time on, you know, different things that have worked for me. Um, <clears throat> but I'd say that service was critical for me in terms of uh, getting, you know, really involved in the fellowship. And I was fortunate enough to make some friends, you know, early on that, you know, are still, you know, friends to this day that are in the program that were already super involved in a service, YPA service. And, you know, made me or you know suggested that I come to 
you know, home group meetings to business meetings uh, to, you know, different service committees early on. And that was how I really got plugged into the fellowship. Um, when, you know, as I mentioned, my instincts were to just, you know, just get up and go and go home and, um, you know, sort of check the box and get my meeting sheet signed. So those are the, the three things that I wanted to share as it relates to experience on the strength front, which I really think about is just proof that you can get through difficult times sober, uh, you know, for better or worse, had a lot of experience with that. Um, early in recovery, the first thing that comes to mind to me is I used alcohol to medicate for such a long time that I didn't know what it felt like to have a bad day and to be okay with that. And so I remember the first time that that happened and just sort of, I would just always medicate and kind of drown those feelings away. And I just remember that feeling of like, man, I just had a bad day and that's okay. You know, and I'm just gonna like choose to go to bed and that feeling so strangely foreign. Um, and sort of working through that pain and learning to live with those feelings. Um, you know, it's just a part of, you know, getting sober. Um, I used to have an extremely active I guess, ego or mind. I don't know. My thoughts would always race at night. Um, and there were times that I just remember, you know, saying the third step prayer or a shortened version of it, like, God, please take this away from me, or like over and over again. And, you know, I've found that that, that really works. And for me, I had a pretty transformational experience doing the, or sharing my fourth step, doing my fifth step with a sponsor. I used to harbor a lot of feelings of, of guilt and regret about things that I'd done a long time ago. And that was a pretty transformational experience for me as it relates to just getting out of my head and, um, you know, learning to forgive myself, you know, as I also, you know, learn to forgive other people. The last thing that I want to mention on, on this front is that one of the most difficult things I think that can happen, um, you know, as I was working on my, uh, my four step on my fears list, one of my fears, which was of my, uh, my dad passing away, um, which, you know, he had really been, my parents had divorced at a young age and he had been kind of the primary custodian, me and my brother, and he was kind of like my rock. Um, so that fear of what would happen, you know, if, if that took place, um, you know, wound up happening. So five years ago now, um, uh, my dad, you know, was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and, um, you know, over the course of a year, you know, wound up, uh, you know, I was going through radiation and chemo and then surgery, which went poorly and then wound up passing away. And that was something that, you know, if I had ever thought, man, like, I would have a reservation about staying sober through that. Like that would have been it for sure. Um, I like, definitely would have drank um, and, you know, managed to get through it. And honestly, like the drinking would only made that worse, you know, um, it's kind of what I saw at the time. But if you'd asked me 10 years ago, if I could have gotten through that without medicating in some way, you know, drinking, I would have told you you're crazy. And, you know, one of the beautiful things about, uh, you know, my dad's passing was that I did get to, you know, show up for him in a way that uh, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, had I, had I still been using. And he got to know me for years, you know, as someone that, you know, does what he says he's going to do and, um, you know, fulfills his commitments and, um, so anyways, that was, that was a pretty powerful experience. And, um, 
you know, grateful that I got to kind of go through that sober and definitely stronger for it. And, you know, I've gotten to go now to, man, it made me get so emotional. Um, I've gotten to, you know, go to, you know, other people's parents um, or grandparents in the program services. You know, I just think it's just important to show up for people in that way. Um, man, ooh. Um, but, uh, uh, sorry guys. Um, so, uh, gosh, I, uh, one thing that, uh, you know, was really magical and I'll just cry through this. You guys, it's just... <laughs> I'm like an ugly crier, but uh, was was that I you know was so grateful for was that there were I grew up in in Seattle and live in Nashville now and there were three uh, guys from the program in Nashville that wound up flying out to uh, to Seattle and uh, you know. coming to my dad's service and, you know, it's just, <clears throat> it was just great, you know, having, having that support. So anyways, uh, that's strength for you. But, uh, you know, there, again, back to the fellowship, like I couldn't, I could, I don't think I could have gotten through that without, uh, you know, those guys showing up for me. All right. Time to pull it back together. We're going to turn the corner to help which is proof that things do indeed get better um, and get awesome. So I think the first thing, you know, what did I want when I first got sober? Well, first of all, I wanted to stop obsessing about alcohol. Um, I set the bar pretty low, you know, uh, but that in itself is a miracle, you know, 10 years in. I just don't think about it all that much, you know, which is a blessing. Uh, also, you know, I, I wanted my driver's license back. I wanted to, you know, not go to court every single week. Um, I wanted to not have to call my probation officer. I want to not have to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, that has all come true for me. I don't freak out when I see, you know, blue lights in the, the rear view mirror. Um, and you know, life is, is better today. Um, uh, and it's so much more than I could have wished for, you know, uh, when I was first getting sober. Um, and, uh, I used to think a lot about my sort of bucket list of all the things that I wanted to do, but ultimately prior to getting sober, like they were just dreams and things that I, you know, plan to do, but never actually could sort of get off the couch to do anything about. And I'm really grateful that I've gotten to do a bunch of amazing things, you know, since I got, got sober, travel to wonderful places, um, you know, build relationships, um, you know, repair relationships with, with my family. Um, as I mentioned, you know, show up for my family and, uh, you know, Things aren't perfect today by any means. Uh, you know, I don't think things are, are ever going to be, you know, perfect all the time. But, uh, you know, I'm able to get through life's challenges and, you know, take failures with, with stride, you know, in stride. Um, and just super grateful for the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, I guess I'm sort of at my time. Um, but... Again, really appreciate you guys having me, and uh, thanks for being patient with me during my little craft fest. And uh, really excited to to hear and, and listen uh, what you guys have to share. So, really appreciate it.